Hello everybody, welcome to Ageless Rock Channel. Today, we are going to check out an interesting archaeological site in Guatemala. This site is relatively unknown simply because the level of excavation done is still at an early stage. But even with little to see, you still can see a lot more than others if you wear your megalithic lens. Washaktun was rediscovered by Dr. Silvanus Morley in 1916. He called this Washaktun, which in Maya language means eight stone. It is not because there is something to do with eight stones, but rather it is a Maya calendar of cycle 8 date found in Stella 9. Despite his presence there during studies, Mole was unaware that the locals already called it Bambonal. The original name is believed to be Sian Ka'an, which means born in heaven. There are so many Maya sites but too few archaeologists to keep this site busy with excavation activities. The next visit by a Western archaeologist occurred eight years later when Franz Blum from Denmark paid a visit in 1924. It was here at this site that Franz Blum first noticed the astronomical alignments for solstices and equinoxes. Pyramid E7 looking at temple E1, E2 and E3 gave a stunning view of sunrise. This E-group formation became more famous as more and more sites are noted for its astronomical alignments. Other sites such as Lost World Pyramid at Tikal has a clearer letter E formation of the north, central and south structures on a platform. The same astronomical alignments can be found here. The famous E-group style in Washaktun has great accuracy for observing solstices and equinoxes. But as for the rest throughout Mesoamerica, Many are not accurate for astronomical alignments. So, we have to lower our expectation when it comes to one such as Naranjo Archaeological Site. By 2016, there are 142 Group E formations you can view the alignments for solstices and equinoxes. I wonder why they needed so many and mostly are concentrated in Guatemala. If this is for agriculture, I would assume it should be more spread out based on places you can plant the crops. Why would there be so many concentrated in east side of Petén in Guatemala? Based on this map, Petén should be the agricultural hub for exports to other parts of Mesoamerica. If accuracy is important, we have to also consider the accuracy right up to the perfect degree which is actually not on the top of the pyramid but rather somewhere on the upper part of the stairway facing east towards the rising sun. The experts are keen to find the exact alignment and praise the ancient Mayas as highly advanced. However, in reality, there is no need for such accuracy. What if it is raining heavily on March 21st? Do you still have to plant corn on that day? Planting is never to be exactly on that day. If there is a margin of two weeks for planting, it will be fine. They don't have legal agreements where they have to deliver to manufacturers on a certain day based on contract. Structure E7 is a small structure compared to the largest structure at Washaktun. It is surrounded by trees taller than the structure, making it less impressive. It has stairways on all four sides. There are 16 carvings of snakes and jaguars, which makes it interesting. How can the Maya civilization went downhill so fast that they don't even know how to read their own hieroglyphs after a thousand years of carving into limestone meant for eternity? The Spanish were just as baffled as the Mayas when they were staring at all these excavated monuments. 
This pyramid has a flat top with stucco masks on the side. Even though there are many stucco masks in Maya ancient sites, we actually don't know who they are. Something is wrong with the picture. Approximately 1 km further northwest of E Group is Group A. As you can see from Google Earth, it is partially excavated. But underneath the layer of vegetation, there is another layer of limestone structures. The Washaktun inhabitants of Guatemala at that time have a different perspective of what Washaktun looks like today. This massive project of stacking limestone into pyramids and platforms doesn't quite make sense. Let's check out the monument on East Plaza known as Structure A18. It is an enormous structure facing south. According to Pollock, this is by design a palace. However, according to Ledyard Smith, the superstructure was mentioned as a temple. The most prominent structure at Washaktun is Pyramid A18. The entire Group A Acropolis is already 38 meters above the water hole below. So, by climbing up the tree top on top of the pyramid prior to excavation, you can see pyramids at Tikal, about 20 kilometers south of Washaktun, perched above the forest canopy. This pyramid was first mapped by Franz Blum, but at that time, he did not have the permission to excavate. In 1927, Mrs. Oliver Rickardson discovered a burial site under the floor of Room 10. By employing one worker over two seasons in 1928, Mr. Pollock was able to reveal the pyramid in more detail. Academically, this monument is known as a superstructure. There are three entrances visible from far. The west and center entrance is 2.5 meters wide and 2.13 meters high, while the east doorway is smaller and measures 1.22 meters wide and 2.13 meters high. The base of the pyramid is 36.37 meters wide and 22.5 meters deep. It rises 6.19 meters high. The second tier, known as the substructure, has a stairway 13.41 meters wide and is made up of five steps. Then, you will come to the superstructure with 11 rooms on the first level. It sounds like a lot of rooms, but considering the volume of limestones and mortar needed to make only 11 rooms on the first level of floor space will require second opinion if that even makes sense. The rooms are very small and is hardly useful for any purpose I can think of. Let's take a look at room number 6. It is accessible through room number 3. I will assume Room number 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 will be pitch dark even during the day because light don't bend within a few narrow rooms. If this is frequently used, it will have plenty of soot at the top. The room is 15.39 meters wide but only 1.67 meters deep. That is a ridiculous design whether it is for temple or palace. To call this empty space a room is rather misleading. If this is a palace, what room would that be? If this is a temple, what god was worshipped here? This structure is facing south, so that means there is neither sunrise nor sunset to light up this room. On the west of room 6 is room 7, which can only be entered through room 8. It is 3.56 meters deep, but only 1.17 meters wide. Again, I'm wondering what kind of room is that? If this is a palace, how useful is that fit for a king? If this is a temple, what gods and deities would possibly end up here for worship 
since there are no statues and reliefs. This photo of room 8 shows room 7 is on the left of the end of room 8. Moving on to the second floor of the top structure is a structure with seven rooms. From the outside, it looks like three entrances into three rooms, but it is actually a very large room. Room number 12 is the largest room measuring 15.24 meters wide by 1.88 meters deep. It has access to room 16, 17 and 18. I can imagine room 16 to be dark, while 17 and 18 to be very dark, if not pitch dark and small. The center has a structure known as an altar. It is 74 cm high, 3.05 meters long, and only 1.05 meters deep. It was originally a block of stone, but a wall was built to the height of 1.55 meters. It looks like an altar and therefore archaeologists suspect this superstructure is possibly a temple. When the Europeans arrived, this is pretty much what they saw for the first time. The locals have been used to seeing this for the last 1000 years. Both have one thing in common. They all knew nothing about how it got here. Based on the scale given, this pyramid is about 20 meters high. With 18 rooms on a huge structure, it seems proper to call this a palace for the king. But these rooms are too small for anyone to live inside. There is enough raw material for more than 100 stone houses and all they wanted was a pyramid with 18 rooms with no windows. That is a strange concept for a palace. After excavation, the meticulously documented measurements gave us a clearer picture of what was under the soil. A spectacular monument rising 20 meters high is left to our imagination. Artist impressions will give us the idea that it was a palace. But how do you really make use of these long but narrow cavities we call rooms and chambers? You can draw 100 people standing around to make this look like a busy palatial center. But what were the Mayas doing standing around? At the end of the day, with all the resources available at our disposal, the experts are still unable to give us a definite answer as to what this pyramid is for. Did ancient Mayas outsmart the geniuses of today by building it, using it, and removing all the necessary objects to prevent future civilization from having the slightest hint why they built this. I think these rooms might offer some idea of what this entire pyramid is for. The long and narrow rooms, number 8 and 9, have wooden beams which we assume is for support but I doubt if the walls of stones can be prevented from collapsing because of two flimsy wooden sticks. Maybe there was a highly radioactive material on the altar that radiates energy, and the wood is to measure the exposure of the radioactive material. Wood decay was probably an indicator of decay due to radiation. Until today, the smartest brains on this planet Earth is still no match for the Mayas who were so advanced in ancient times but so primitive about 100 years ago. Washaktun is believed to be a pre-classic historical site. Things started to take shape somewhere in the middle of pre-classic era. It rose rapidly into prominence but the entire civilization mysteriously vanished to the point of lost civilization. They went from highly advanced in a very short period of time to highly primitive even faster. This scenario cannot explain human behavior. There are many structures partially excavated and it's best to be left that way to avoid further deterioration due to weathering. 
Normally, when there are many structures, it should be easier to explain things. But it seems like the more we dig, the more confused we get. From group A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, we have plenty of reasons to visit this site. But the road to get there is still much to be desired. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on Washaktun Pyramids where astronomical ancient achievements remain a mystery. See you in the next video and have a wonderful day. This is Bernie Ong signing out. Ya'an ki ilik ula'a ki in.